Today in the LCF School, we want to look at uh, a typical Heathkit product from the mid 70s. This is the HD 1410 CW keyer, an iambic keyer, electronic keyer. It's made with the typical Heathkit green. Front panel is very simple but uh, complete with the speed control, volume control, the iambic paddles and a pilot light to tell you that the power is turned on. Even by today's standards, the Heathkit Iambic Keyer model HD 1410 is quite a nice unit. Here's the back panel. You see the AC input. If you want to operate portable, here's the 12 volt input running off batteries. External key, keyer output to keyer rig, receiver audio in, and phone output. At the phone output you would hear either the CW tone from the keyer or the receiver. We're going to take a look at the inside now. You see the front panel. And it's a single-sided circuit card, printed circuit card. Not too high a density. You see the feed here from some TTL transistor integrated circuits. The circuits are made from integrated circuits, uh, discrete components, capacitors and resistors and transistors and volume controls and speakers. Here's the tone control. That's an internal adjustment. And again you see the back panel. Turning it over looking inside, we won't delve into all the components in there, but you can see the major ones. There's a power transformer. Here's a paddle for the ambient keyer. Here's a speaker over here to the right. You see some of the integrated circuits down here in the bottom. These little black things that look like caterpillars. There are TTL integrated circuits, some discrete components in there, some resistors, capacitors. Here's some potentiometers for the speed control and the volume control. And Here's some capacitors here on the back, and then you see your, your output and inputs on the back panel coming in through here. Here's a Heathkit manual. This is actually a copied manual from the secondary market. I bought the keyer at the Dayton Hambench in 2009. I think I paid about $25, and I believe I paid around $30 for the manual. That may be incorrect, but it's fairly close. And those of you that need manuals for equipment, I want to show you where you can get the replacement manuals. Here's a page from the Keyer manual, typical of all the Heathkit manuals, incredibly detailed. This, this manual for this little Keyer has 65 pages of instructions. Every component has a pictorial, a part number, and a name, and a drawing, and shows you exactly where it goes. And this was all done before the days of computer-aided design, so these are hundreds of drawings done by hand. It was a heyday for uh, draftsman in those days. Here's a page that has instructions and the location of the various components as it goes onto the printed circuit board. Even the mechanical assembly is great detail. Again, the part number and the name of each component. If you're the kind of person that's curious how the circuits operate, here's a little block diagram of how each little circuit does its job and where it finally comes out on the speaker. And finally, of course, if you're interested in how the actual circuits operate, there is a complete schematic diagram of all the components and all the logic all the way through from the keyer paddle to the output. For those of you that are interested in more of the history of the Heath Company, here's an interesting book you might want to pick up on the Amazon.com used books called Heath Nostalgia by Terry Perdue. Here's the inside cover for those of you that may want to purchase this book <clears throat> on the used market. you probably find it on Amazon.com. There's not a lot of information here, but I think there's enough for you to purchase the book, a brief history uh, about the Heath Company by Terry Perdue. Here's some more information for those of you that may want to order this book. For those of you amateur radio folks that are interested in uh, amateur radio history of uh, the Heath Kit, here's a guide to amateur radio products published in 1995. That looks like a Mohawk series there. And this was uh, written and published by Chuck Penson, WA7ZZE. Here's the publishing information. You can stop the video. I think it'll be readable.